The NASCAR Cup Series has the Daytona National Speedway for the final race of the regular season. And we see a lot of chaos, a lot of wrecks, some controversy, and a driver clutching up their way to make the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. I just got done watching the NASCAR Cup Series race from Daytona National Speedway, the Coke Zero Sugar 400. We got a lot to talk about from the race, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So no one actually had to drop to the rear of the field, and this race originally was supposed to be last night. But because of the fact that rain came in, the race actually got postponed to really early this morning at 10.05 a.m. This when the green flag dropped. Very, very late start. Very early start time with early start times for a cup race in a long time. But it was an early start to the day. So at the start of the race, you had Kyle Larson lead the field from the outside with Chase Elliott on the inside. And Chase Elliott got a really good run on the start and was able to basically get the race lead. At this point, it basically be a single file train really for the first 15 or 20 laps with Chase Elliott dominating. The first kind of incident would happen on lap 15 for Kyle Larson who basically had an engine failure on his car. He would come down the road and go to the garage. Because of this, Austin Hendrick would end up losing the draft and would basically go a lap down because of it. Then we basically saw the first pass for the lead in race where Eric Jones got a great run from Denny Hamlin, got a push from Denny Hamlin, and got past him for the lead, and then Chase Elliott got back around him. Then with around five laps to go in stage number one, I believe Chase Elliott leading, we saw the first incident of the race took place in the first crash of the race. Denny Hamlin had some contact from Eric Jones. He basically spun out in a massive, massive wreck. Well, not a major wreck. That would affect the playoffs a little bit. Denny Hamlin, Chris Bell, Ryan Blaney, who was looking to try to get into the playoffs, Kevin Harvick, Ty Gibbs, Brad Keselowski would all end up getting involved in the wreck. And also, Christabel got a lot of damage and would fall out of this race with Ryan Blaney getting a ton of damage. Major, major implications for Ryan Blaney. And then we see some cars basically stay out, that being Chase Elliott, Harris Burr, Joey Logano, Mark Truck Jr., while the rest leaders came down the road. To me, the incident was just a coordinate fact. You're going to have those incidents in these races, and it is what it is right there. So on the final restart, we on the last lap of stage number one, you had Chase Elliott lead the field from the inside with Joey Logano on the outside. Chase Elliott would get a really, really great restart, but Joey Logano got a really, really strong run, and he would hold off a hard charge in Chase Elliott in a drag race to the line with Joey Logano winning stage number one. Then Ryan Blaney ended up beating minimum speed. Good for him on that, but Brad Zosky would fall out of this race. Then we see some guys come down the road. Ross Chastain, Joey Logano, Harrison Burton, Chase Briscoe, Daniel Hammer, Gramanos, and Chase Elliott, while the rest of the field basically stayed out. And Kyle Busch would also get a penalty for removing equipment on pit road. He would have to go to the rear. Then on the race, sorry, yeah, Corey LeJoy lead the field from the inside with Bubble Walls on the outside, and Bubble Walls got to the race lead for a few laps. Then we had a couple exchanges, Corey LeJoy and Chris Buescher. They would actually both end up getting lead. LeJoy would lead a few laps, then Buescher got around him. And then we saw a lot of great battling in the early portions of stage number two. We actually saw Brian Blaney lose a drop with the hood flapping, and with that potentially coming off, he decided to drop out of the draft. Meanwhile, we nearly had another incident happen on lap 63 for Chris Buescher, who basically got pushed out of the draft, got really, really loose coming down to trioval, but luckily was able to save it. Then we basically saw some green flag pit stops at this point with Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, Bob Wallace, Mark Trick, Jr., all the Toyotas that were in contention still in the race. They would all come down pit road. And then a few laps later, everyone else in the field basically came down pit road. And then the concern had basically been weather throughout the race. Luckily, we got to halfway, so this race was official. Eventually, all leaders came out. You had Reddick lead, then Chase Ellie got the lead, and then Kyle Busch got a really strong run. And he got the lead past Tyler Reddick and got around him. And he would basically hold off Martin Trex Jr. as Denny Hamlin gave him a run. Kyle Busch would win stage number two with Martin Trex Jr. once again picking up a ton of bonus points. A couple drivers would basically stay out, including Ty Dillon, Chris Busch, and BJ McLeod, as they basically all thought that this race is basically going to be ending early anyway, so they decided to stay out. And then they eventually came back down pit road. And then Kyle Busch also got a speeding penalty on there. So on the restart with 60-plus laps to go, you have Michael Medell lead the field from the inside with Denny Hamlin on the outside. And then Joe Logano got a really strong run by McDowell, and Denny Hamlin reported a vibration. Then we saw another incident on lap 102 on the backstretch as there was trouble between Tyler Reddick and Michael McDowell. Tyler Reddick gave a really good push to Michael McDowell. It's a shame for me because I was a big fan of the Horizon car. Some associated with the Horizon brand. It had been cool to see Michael McDowell win. But basically, Michael McDowell basically got put into the outside wall, and then there was an accordion effect behind that involved Mark Trish Jr., Corey LaJoy, William Byron, Ross Chessing, Chris Buescher, and it would all end up getting damaged, bringing out the caution and multiple would fall out of the race. 
So on the restart, you had Joe that got to lead the field from the inside, and Tyler Reddick on the outside, and Tyler Reddick got a great restart and took the race lead from Stenhouse. And then Alex Oma, he got around him and was able to get the race lead. And then we saw Bowman lead for a little bit, and then we would see some moves start happening, or Chase Briscoe got a really, really strong run and got to the outside, and this is where Trouble Brew once again with 36 laps to go. Another big one that would strike, end up striking in this race, Chase Bristow got basically, I think, into the back of Alex Bowman. They also ended up wrecking each other. And then a bunch of drivers to get involved, including Austin Dillon, Harrison Byrne, Bubba Walls, Todd Gillen, Cole Custer, Sandhouse Bowman, and Briscoe were all involved in the wreck. That was a mixture of Bowman and Briscoe just racing for the end of the race because they all thought the race was going to end. Basically, just a wreck that happens on a front stretch. It's one of those super speedway deals. And then a couple drivers decided to play a little bit of strategy. Justin Haley, Eric Jones, and B.J. McLeod all decided to play a little bit of a strategy game. And basically, they all decided to stay out because they thought the rain was going to be coming. So on the restart with 30 laps to go, you had Justin Haley lead the field from the inside with him on the inside with Eric Jones on the outside. On the back stretch with Justin Haley basically clear for the race lead, we saw basically Eric Jones and Joe Logano basically have a wreck contact from Eric on the roll. Eric Jones and Logano will end up going around bringing out another caution, and Austin Dillon went up getting the free pass. So on the restart with 26 laps to go, you had Justin Haley lead the field from the inside with a 10 car on the outside, and Justin Haley was able to get the race lead. Down with a really strong push, Daniel Suarez got a really, really good push from Alvarola, and he would end up getting the race lead. Then eventually, Denny Hamlin got around, and then the best and massive one would end up striking with 23 laps to go, basically due to rank. Multiple cars got loose on the front stretch in turn one. This included Denny Hamlin and Daniel Suarez. And then everybody else basically ended up getting involved in this wreck. This included Kevin Harvick, Tyler Reddick, Chase Elliott, Hamlin, Almarola, the other Hemrick, Busher, Kyle Busch, Harris Byrne, Bubba Walsh, Justin Haley, Ty Dillon, pretty much everybody else ended up getting involved in the big wreck, bringing out the caution. And because of the rain, Austin Dillon actually ended up getting the race lead. Because of this incident, he actually had the race lead. And then because of this, we all thought the race was over because the red flag had come out due to rain, due to the track getting really, really soaked. Well, a lot of people thought that maybe Kevin Harvick had the lead, but he didn't have the race lead as they explained it on TV. We all thought the race is over, but NASCAR did not budge. And eventually, after a three and a half hour long rain delay, I'll talk about this now. Let's talk about this. I want to say this. At first, I was really, really angry at NASCAR. But I'm not feeling like angry at NASCAR anymore for the incident. I know people at the track were saying it was raining, but NASCAR really didn't have a lot of time to press the button. Again, I was really mad at NASCAR had a terrible officiating call. He had some drivers saying it was raining, others that were basically saying it wasn't. But I will say this, I'm not going to 100% get mad at NASCAR like I have, but I understand the driver's concerns and frustration. we got to listen to these drivers. I'm not going to put full blame on NASCAR for this, but I'm going to put some blame on NASCAR, but some... Oh, but also some blame on other individuals there. You can't really control the weather. I'm not going to put 100% blame on NASCAR. I put some blame on NASCAR. This is not as bad as the New Hampshire incident, in my opinion. So after NASCAR had a three hours and 20 minute red flag, they finally got this race restarted with 16 laps to go. <clears throat> with Austin Dillon leading the field from the inside with Austin Eric on the outside. Austin Tim would get a really strong run down the backstretch and he would get the lead from Austin Dillon to get the race lead. And then we basically had a four-car breakaway where Austin or Austin Dillon, Cody Ware, and Mark Trichner were all, actually Landon Castle, were basically up there in the four-car breakaway. Eventually, with about nine laps to go, BCC saw Mark Trichner. He started falling back in Landon Castle. They started falling back. Then with six laps to go, Cole Custer basically ended up losing a tire, but the field to the field ended up staying green, which would, really would help Ryan Blaney. And then Mark Trichner started losing positions. With three laps to go in this race, this is where all the chaos pretty much ensued. Austin Dillon basically got into the back of Austin Cinder, just had a little contact. Cinder got really, really loose, and Austin Dillon got to the race lead. Meanwhile, you had drivers like Noah Grace and Lynn Castle and B.J. McLeod all coming out of left field getting major, major runs. As they came to the white flag, you had Austin Dillon and Mark, basically Austin Dillon having to hold off his teammate Tyler Reddick, Lynn Castle, and Noah Grayson for the victory. Austin Dillon will come off the final corner in in clutch fashion. Austin Dillon picks up this first win of the 2022 season, his first win since Texas in 2020, and becomes, I believe, the 16th driver to win this season, having all 16 drivers, well, not Kurt Busch, but having the 15th driver to lock in with a win. Austin Dillon picks up the victory in this race. What a wild, chaotic 
an absolute crazy race, a race for some that are probably going to be embarrassing. But Austin Dillon got through the wreck, actually got involved in a wreck, and picks up a pretty clutch victory for Austin Dillon. Now this means both RCR cars pick up a victory, which I think they're the only sec only the second or third organization to have all our teams winning, all coming from Chevy, I might add. But Austin Dillon with a very, very clutch performance. We all thought he was going to have kind of a, a Mickey win, but it's not a Mickey win. He won the race fair and square, took the lead with three laps to go, and picks up a very clutch victory. Congratulations to Austin Dillon of picking up the victory. It's a shame the win in your system is a thing. I'm not a big fan of the win in your win in your end system. I've been really saying this for a long time. But Austin Dillon was there and got the win, becomes a 16th driver to win in 2022, and picks up a very important victory. Congratulations to Austin Dillon on picking up the victory. So now I'm going to talk about the overall race as a whole and give my score on today's race. So Austin Dillon picks up the victory. Tyler Reddick finishes second. I think Reddick, without the damage, probably could have had a shot to win the race because Reddick had a really, really good car until he got some damage in the middle portion of the race. But still a really strong run for second. Hey, RCR got one too, just like they did in 2020 when they won at Texas. Good to see both of them get a top two finish. Reddick ended up finishing second. Good run from him. Austin Center finished his third. Center basically fell basically almost outside the top 10. He bounces back to a very solid third place finish. Good run for Center regardless. He was the only other car, I think, that really had any sort of speed to beat Austin Dillon. But he got kind of turned. He finishes third, though. Landon Castle finished fourth. How about that for Landon Castle? Landon Castle had a shot to win the race. Ran top 10. Really was quite a quiet most of the day. Was running in the back most of the day. But ended up getting a fourth place finish with all the chaos. He gets a really strong fourth place finish. Great for Landon Castle. This might be his only second or third top five of his career, so amazing to see that for Landon Castle. How about Noah Gregson? Their beer and motorsports team, the team that only runs a few races a year, they come into Daytona, and they get a top five finish with Noah Gregson, of course, pending post-race inspection. It's great to see Austin Noah Gregson get an amazing run with a fifth place. Great race. Good run for Noah Gregson. He finishes fifth. Cody Ware finishes sixth. How about that for Cody Ware? Cody Ware, I think this is his first top ten of the 2022 season. It's amazing to see a driver like Cody Ware be able to pick up a good run in sixth place. Good run for Cody Ware. BJ McLeod finishes seventh. How about that for BJ McLeod? McLeod really ran top ten majority day. He finished seventh. Saw a run from him. Mark Trix Jr. finishes eighth. Unfortunately for Mark Trix Jr., he is out of contention to make the playoffs virtually because of his eighth place finish. And with Austin Dillon winning, with Trix being the lowest, he ends up finishing eighth. But unfortunately, he will not be for the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Really hate it for Martin Trix Jr. You know my opinions on the winning your system. I hate the winning your system. I don't think that it should be a thing. But Trix had all season to get it done. But it's a shame for Martin Trix Jr., who's won, I think, the most stages of anybody this year. He finished safe. Terrible news for Martin Trix Jr. David Reagan gets a ninth place finish. Solid run for David Reagan in today's race. A ninth place run is not bad. Oh, a really good run for the 15 team. Both Rick Ware cars got a top 10 finish. How about that for the Rick Ware boys? That's not happened a lot. Good to see David Reagan finish ninth. Kyle Busch finished his 10th. Kyle Busch got involved in multiple incidents in today's race, had multiple issues on pit road, and still finished his 10th. Good run from Kyle Busch at the end of the day. Bubba Wallace, who was the first car one lap down, he finished 11th. I think if Bubba Wallace had gotten the free pass, I know he had a lot of damage, but I think he could have had a shot to winning this race because he's a really good super speed racer. I thought Bubba was going to be a threat. He was a threat today to win this race. It's a shame he got involved in one of the wrecks. It really wasn't really his fault, but he does end up finishing 11th. Saw a run in 11th place for Bubba Wallace again. Bubba, again, with a really solid run for sure in 11th place. I mean, it's a shame that he didn't get a top 10, but this is now another race where he's finished in the top 15. Solid run ending for Bubba Wallace. Uh, Joey Logano finishes 12th. I think Logano had one of the fastest cars in the race for sure. It's a shame Logano cannot close out of the deal to basically get the victory, but Logano, it is what it is with Logano. He finishes 12th. Ty Gibbs finishes 13th. Ty Gibbs with another solid top 15 finish. Ty Gibbs was a lot of this race, like four or five laps down. But he does bounce back to 13th place finish with a lot of cars falling out. Saw a run from Ty Gibbs in 13th. Alex Bowman finishes 14, four or five laps down in this race. Bowman led some laps, caused one of the wrecks, but he finished 14th. Top 15 for him, just still a struggling year for Bowman. Really has no momentum going into playoffs. He finished 14th. Ryan Blaney, despite being seven or eight laps down in this race, he still finishes 15th in today's race. And he did that to get enough points to make the playoffs. He, Blaney, I think, would have had a car that could have won, but that damage early in the first wreck really cost him a shot and opportunity. But he does get a top 15 finish. Again, good to see Blaney end up making the playoffs because he deserves to be in there. Now he's just going to have to go out there and win. I mean, he won the All-Star race, so technically he has a win, but it really isn't a points-paying win. But regardless, Ryan Blaney finishes 15th. 
Not a great run, but not a bad run for Blaney, but he did survive the carnage. Cole Custer finishes in 16th top 20 run for him. Eric Jones, who got damaged and basically fell out of the race, he finished in 17th. Eric Jones had one of the fastest cars. It's a shame that he couldn't get it done today. Ty Dillon finishes 18th. Harrison Byrne finishes in 19th. Kevin Harvick was complaining on TV. He finishes 20th. Eric Amaral finished 21st. Ricky Sinus Jr. finishes 22nd. 23rd for Todd Gillen. Daniel Soares, who had a really fast car, finished 24th. Danny Hamill, who had one of the fastest cars, he finishes 25th. Daniel Hebert, 26th. Chris Buescher, 27th. Justin Haley finishes 28th. J Chase Elliott, who I think I wanted two or three strongest cars, finishes 29th. Corey LaJoy finishes 30th. Chris Chase Briscoe finishes 31st. Michael McDowell finishes 32nd. Ross Chastain, who fell out of the race, finishes 33rd. William Byron finishes 34th. Brad Kozlowski finishes in 35th. 36th place finish for Chris Rebell. And finishing last in 37th place is Kyle Larson after the engine failure. So now I'm on an overall talk about my thoughts on today's race and give you my score for today's race. In the first 130, 140 last for the rain delay happened, I thought this race was really, really solid. Your very typical super speed race where these guys are having a lot of urgency. You saw a lot of side by side. You saw a lot of chaos in this race for the first 140 laps, really for the first two thirds. There's really eight and ten ninths of this race. It was a really, really strong and a really good showing. Unfortunately, with the rain delay happened, the race kind of wasn't as good. And then basically how the NASCAR kind of officiated that, I can't fully blame them for what happened there. But how they kind of officiated really kind of put the damper on the race for me. And it's going to unfortunately kind of lower my score. So for today's Cup Series race at Daytona, I unfortunately am going to give this race. I was originally going to give this race a 9 out of 10. I'm going to give this race today an 8 out of 10. It wasn't a great race. It wasn't a terrible race. It's just the end of the race kind of got tampered by it. But we did get a crazy winner. We saw chaos. This race got postponed to Sunday. And Austin Dillon ended up winning. For me today, an 8 out of 10. This race would have been a 9, 9 and a half. It was about an 8 out of 10 race. Almost slower. But he did see a very solid finish. 8 out of 10 is my score for today's race. So, that is going to be for the NASCAR Cup Series race view from Daytona International Speedway. I want to thank guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Turf K. Sean, so you know when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's go to below over that and comment with your thoughts on today's race. What are your thoughts on today's race at Daytona? Let me know below. Let me know your score in the comments below. And congratulate Austin Dillon on picking up the victory. Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we're going to have a NASCAR news video. We've got some NASCAR news that we're going to discuss on the channel. Then on Tuesday, we're going to be having playoff predictions drop on the channel where I will predict every single round from the round of 16 to the round of 4, the championship 4. And trust me, this is probably going to be the toughest championship predictions and playoff predictions I have ever had outside of a couple drivers. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.